Okay, so with furlies, we had kind of looked at that middle section. Up to this section. I usually refer to this as the E's, because there's a lot of E's. Then the music shifts. And it goes back to the beginning. At this point, you could end it or you could repeat that middle section. first section of the piece then it continues with with different sections and this keeps coming back um, but they're all much 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 more difficult this section is something that many people that are near beginners can work on and get down the other spots not so much you might need maybe four years of study maybe five kind of depends on um on your teacher and how much you practice and luck, I don't know, just um, because there's the parts are faster and more technically involved. So um, the part that I wanna go over today is gonna be that section I refer to as the E's. This starts it. We're gonna, even though there's overlap between the right and the left hand, one note over overlaps, I'm gonna start this demonstration. You know what, let me check that that yeah, it looks like, you know what, it looks like that's in the camera, but when I play the high E's, I think one E will not show. So from this low E, this is middle C. If you have an acoustic piano, that means it's usually made out of wood. Um, the name is usually right in the middle. This is middle C. And the E we start with is not this one this we usually call this low a if you have a keyboard you have less notes unless you have a full size 88 key keyboard and if you have the keyboard with less notes you most likely can play this but you might have to adapt i'm not going to address that today because that would be different based on your specific instrument but um <laughs> excuse me I did have one student in private lessons last term. He had a smaller keyboard and we worked out a way to get him to play this section by, by keeping things down. I don't want to go into more than that because it's going to be confusing when, you don't, confusing when you don't even know what it is. But once we get through this, if anyone finds out that they run out of notes, then I can show you what will probably work. We're going to start at the low E. In my opinion, the best fingering, it's important to jump up. I call this hop. Um, you play E and then you hop. You hop your whole hand. You hop like that. And you're ready for, ready to play the octave together. That way your hand's ready. E, hop. Then you're going to kind of almost roll your hand. If your hand is in place, you can kind of lean your pinky into this note and just roll or lean your thumb into E. So it's not so much that I'm wiggling these fingers. I'm just, my wrist is turning a little bit. Now, the reason I feel it's important to hop there, because there are published versions of this with a different fingering, but I like hopping. And the reason why is if you do that, you now have a pattern that will repeat. This will make it much easier to learn. So let's look at it after the hop. This is left, then right. Now let's notice what happens. My right hand also does an octave, but it's kind of rolled. It's an octave, but one note at a time. 
and let's look at what happens in the middle. The thumbs touch. And the right hand is going to repeat an E that the left hand played. And to do that, you got to get your left hand thumb out of the way. So when you start this, you're probably going to want to go slow. Keep it comfortable and slow. I like to think, once you see the pattern, I like to notice where it goes left, right, left, right. So we got our hop, then it's left, right. And your hands are both going to move up and it's going to be left, right. And I believe that my pinky on the high E is out of the camera. It is, but you can hear it and I'm telling you what it is. So if I play that whole sequence slowly, hop, that's what I call the E's. And you want to be absolutely certain of these. Um, you don't want to go so fast that you sometimes get mixed up because if you do, you're going to either play too few or too many. So you probably are going to start by working to that point and then getting that first hop in. You want that really smooth and automatic. Then you're probably going to want to start with until that gets easier. And then you're going to want to... You're going to want to work up in small sections. Once you can do this... Now, I'm going to show you this in kind of a stiff way. This is not how you would play. But your hands just move and do the same thing. But it's going to be flowing when you do it. I'm keeping my hands kind of stiff to show the shape is the same. I don't really do it that way when I play it. So I'm going to show what comes after that, but I'm not going to dwell on that. I'd like the focus of this to be getting those E's down. There's only one more step to get back to the beginning. So after this pattern, keeping this slow, I have students stop, really, keep the pinky down, but let's say pause the music. Your left hand is going to come up high. You're going to use two fingers. You're going to use two fingers. That looks kind of like a, um, a gang thing, doesn't it? Or I don't know, a peace sign. You're going to use two fingers of each hand. And your hands are going to alternate. And it's going to be very smooth. It's going to look kind of awesome. But we don't do it because it looks awesome. It's just going to be smooth. You're going to do left, right, left. So this is kind of like, I don't know, a puppy petting something or digging. It's just like your, your arms or your arms alternate. But of course, it's your hands that touch the key. That's going to alternate. And as the bigger motion is alternating, you're going to have this little motion, then the right, then the left, then there's one more D sharp before you get back to the pattern you know. So at that point, you would kind of bring your right hand a little different, then one, two, three, four, five. So... That's enough that anybody that's that far could get started with. I don't think it's a good idea to do that until you're absolutely certain on that whole section with the ease. Do it slow, work up the speed, and still go back to slow. So that's where I'm going to stop.